Tuesday night, what is done? Can't go out. Blue rolls gone. Kettles on. Put your kettle on. Pencils out. News is off. Got take out. Spend all night with good friends. Best friends. Life drawing till the Get your sketchbooks out Everybody's drawing That's what it's about Quarantine is boring Get your sketchbooks out Lock down life drawing Ooh. Ow. Get your sketchbooks out Everybody's drawing that's what it's about. It's what it's about. Quarantine is boring. Quite boring. Get your sketchbooks out. I got my sketchbook out. Lock down life drawing. Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. Uh, I hope you're you're not too hot where you are. You've got a nice cool drink. And you're ready for some drawing. Absolutely loved. The uh, images last week, the the line weight and showing the structure of the head, really really good stuff. Thanks for sending them in. Uh, this week we're looking at pencil and charcoal shading techniques. Okay, so getting into the rendering and also uh, yeah, we're, we're also looking at shadow. So identifying shadows and making sure we really know that that key knowledge, that fundamentals. Um, uh, this is the tenth week. I can't believe it. I, it's been. I can't. I cannot believe it. Thanks for joining me uh, for this for this long. It's fantastic. Um, I've got a bit of an announcement. Unfortunately, this week is going to be the last week of lockdown life drawing. Um, so thank you guys so much for your support, and uh, you know, hopefully, it's kept you drawing. It's kept me drawing. I've absolutely loved it. Um, the good news is we will be back. Okay. Um, we will be back. We will be back. We're going to start a, a another stream. Uh, just going to take a break. I need to move house now. The lockdown's eased. I'm going to set up a studio, so I'm not in my little bedroom. And um, yeah, we're going to start a new art club stream on the sixth of July at seven p.m. So I really hope you you uh, you are uh, you join us for that. There's going to be a link in the description of this video to a mailing list and you can sign up just to get all the details and everything just so that you've got the right materials and everything ready for, for July. Um, yeah, thank you so much for all your support. Um, there's this new class, we're going to be covering art fundamentals, tips, techniques, you know, same, same kind of stuff. Uh, but this time a range range of subjects okay so it's not just going to be life drawing we will include life drawing uh, but it's going to really open out the stream hopefully and um, uh, you know more featured artists challenges just to keep you inspired so yeah I hope you'll join me in, at the new class this week though let's get at the schedule pencil grades pencil shading techniques types of shadow so I put in brackets great mistakes because I was going to put beginner mistakes but actually they're the right mistakes to be making. Okay, so we'll take a little bit of look, we'll look at that. Um, we're gonna do a couple of poses in the first half with the pencils, uh, take a tea break. Then we're coming back with the charcoal uh, materials. So if you've got some pencils to draw with, fantastic. If you've got charcoal for the second half, brilliant. If you wanna just carry on with the pencils, uh, you know, use whatever you've got. Uh, but we're looking more at charcoal in the second half. We've got some fantastic um, uh, tonal poses. I'm really looking forward to sharing with you. Um, yeah, anything else? Boom, boom, boom. Got a wall of notes. 
Um, yeah, if you do enjoy the stream, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Uh, it really helps us out. And yeah, let's enjoy. Let's do this. So, uh, pencil grades. Here we go. Right. So, hey guys. So, I got some pencils out, and I've got, you can see, I've got all different uh, brands because I didn't have a full set. But pencil grades basically. They're the number on the bottom of the pencil, um, and they're gonna, uh, they're basically telling you how much graphite or clay that is in the pencil. Okay, so uh, H stands for hard, and there's gonna be more clay, and it's gonna be a bit of a harder pencil, and, uh, and B stands for black, which means more graphite. Okay, so it's gonna be a bit more smudgy, uh, uh, etc. Okay, and have you noticed we've got this lovely lovely scale uh, from 5H all the way to 6B. I'm sure the list goes on and on. But you've got HBs in the middle, pretty pretty standard. You probably saw them at school. Really, real in between pencil. And then it branches off from that. Okay, so as the numbers are getting uh, larger on the right side, the pencils are gonna get softer. And as the numbers get larger with the Hs, they're gonna get harder and harder. Okay, so the hard pencils are great for you know, architectural studies, um, things that you don't want to smudge, you know, uh, fine detail, um, underdrawing, and soft pencils, they're gonna be smudgy, but they're gonna be great for creating darker tones. Uh, and, you know, the 2B, very versatile, 4B, I love, you know, so they're great, really great sketching pencils. Uh, the pencils that I have, uh, that I prefer actually, are these uh, Faber-Castell 9000s. I've got I've got a link in the description if you if you're looking to buy a set of pencils, uh, I do recommend these. They're fantastic and nice and nice and smooth. Um, um, what else? What else on pencils? Yeah. Oh yeah. You might have you might have realised that we've got an F sticking out there between H and HB. Now I was looking into this. I was like, what is the he the F? And I, I, I thought it standed for fine point, but it might actually stand for Franz Hardtrumpf, who is credited with creating the uh, process for pencil gradation. So a little little token for himself in there just to be, actually I don't have a F pencil, but I appreciate your efforts because I love the gradation. So thanks Franz. Um, so yeah, pencil grades, um, get yourself perhaps a 2B, 4B, there's some really good ones to start with. Um, and you might find, you know, a HB and a harder pencil for some fine detail or, or something like that later on. Um, I want to go into now pencil sh pencil shading techniques, and I've picked out three artists that um, are big, are quite inspiring for me. Uh, and John Howie, John Howie, along with Alan Lee, uh, they were the concept artists for the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and. He his the, his pencil marks are so, full of so much energy that I just fell in love with this style, and I've tried to kind of emulate that um, sort of since I saw his work. And really, what he's doing, he's you know choosing a direction, and then all of all of his pencil marks, all of his hatching, is going essentially in that direction. He is tilting, he is moving it around but we're getting that lovely flow from left to right. Okay, and it's overlapping uh, areas of tone. Okay, and so I really love this. I call this directional hatching, um, and it's kind of stylistic thing. And I think, you know, there's so many ways to hatch and so many ways to um, uh, to, to render a, an image. It really comes down to your signature. Okay, shading's like a signature, and you'll, you'll find something that you like. Okay, so you can see here, just by changing angle slightly, we can start to build up tone. So really good from John Howard. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Uh, next, Michelangelo. Don't know him personally, but uh, fantastic guy, I'm sure. But the, the Michelangelo contour hatching. Okay, so this is very similar to this. You know, overlapping uh, lines to create tone. So you know, just simple hatching would be like this and then overlapping to create a darker tone 
but Michelangelo's he's going and you see a lot of master artists going around the form okay so if you were to have a cylinder um, or something like this you know he's wrapping around the form and it's adding to that kind of 3d effect and you know really really lovely to uh, way to kind of enhance your drawings okay so think about contour hatching following the forms and last one I've got is uh, Stephen Borman I think that's how you pronounce um, but Stephen is a fantastic uh, sort of more traditional artist and his his approach to, to shading uh, he uses harder pencils and he's you know you can't you can almost not see the lines uh, the gaps between the lines okay and he's taking a lot of time to shade very smoothly and uh, and hatch very carefully okay and, and I think this approach has its merits too you know um, it's a lovely subtle portrait isn't it um, really really um, interesting effect I think Stephen also uses uh, mechanical pencils for some of his process too so you can see how that almost silver point really fine point is going to be um, introducing this lovely subtlety into these into this work so right enough of my waffle on I've got a challenge for you okay hatching challenge I'm gonna give you two minutes now you see this bar up the top here we're going from light to dark okay I want you to try and make a gradient using hatching okay so grab a pencil I'm gonna go for a 4b and I'll give you two minutes and let's try and make that gradient if you finish before then just start experimenting start start making some lines with your pencil and experiment with different ways of hatching so I'm going in here with this first layer of hatching and I'm starting to add more pressure as I come towards this darker side so let's just loosen up hold our pencil like this really nice and freeing so I'm going to change angle my lines are a little bit further apart and then in the darker areas I'm bringing the lines closer together to try and build up some tone okay now I think I'm going to work from the dark from the dark side changing direction slightly again really trying to build the tones that I can see cool so really light bringing it subtlety bringing it subtly across I'm just gonna catch up with some of you hi everyone hi Jamie hi Naomi hi Richard Nikki hi John great I'm glad you're looking forward to it yeah the art club it's gonna be a lot of fun I uh, I really you know wanted to create like a sustainable way that we can keep bringing you these classes um, and I hope you know that really that works out so if you've got if you've got a bit more time let's just play with some hatching try different directions of course there's infinite ways that you can hatch you could do stippling you could use little circles you could even piece together different lines like this and create like a puzzle effect really up to you I want you to experiment today and find something that you you like something that could be part of your signature great that's two minutes I hope you've got a nice gradient light to dark and maybe even a few little experiments too now what's next ah yes types of shadow so types of shadow really 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 key um, great to understand the the shadows so that instead of copying a reference okay um, we can understand how light is affecting this object right and it's another tool for our arsenal so really 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 key um, and if you've gone over this before always great to uh, to reinforce them fundamentals so I'll take you through it we're gonna get this picture of an egg we're gonna turn it black and white so that we can see the values a little bit clearer 
And then we're looking for the light source. Okay, so whenever I'm drawing something, I think, where's the light source? Okay, I might even might even draw it on the page. A little arrow. Okay, where's my light source? Then if you want to sketch along, if you want to make notes, that'd be brilliant. Okay, so light source. And then we've got our highlight. Okay, so the highlight on this egg. Okay, I'm gonna make a rough egg shape. We've got our light source coming in. Okay, and our highlight's gonna be there. So actually the highlight is always, if you imagine the surface is a reflection, like a mirror, it's gonna be reflected from where the, 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 the lamp is. Okay, so wherever that light is, you'll see it. Um, depending on how surf shiny the surface is, you might see other things in the room too. Okay, so we've got our highlight, really important. Half tone. Okay, so all of this area on the egg where it's sort of turning away, it's not highlight, but it's it's got tone. It's got, you know, the in-between tone. That's that half tone. Okay, so all of this area around the highlight is our half tone. Now, terminator. Okay, really, really, really important. Okay, I'm going to try and draw a little bit darker for you here. But... Terminator, this line here that you can see, that red line, okay? The light isn't managing to get past the uh, the egg. Uh, hold on, I think I've got an egg somewhere. Yeah, I've got an egg. Got a rubber egg. <laughs> so imagine that, imagine that egg, and I've got a lamp up here. You know, it wouldn't be able to get past this point. So all of that, area below it is going to be in shadow. So really important, that terminator, no light can get beyond that point. Okay. Uh, and that's with all objects, they're going to have this terminator. Now, what that means is this whole area is going to be in shade. So we can go in, we can shade it. And also there's going to be reflected light coming back up into that area. Can you see, I'm just gonna go back to the um, reference. Can you see that reflected light? That, that, that area of shade, but it's also getting lighter towards the bottom, yeah? You've got the table, you've got all different surfaces reflecting light into that area and, and illuminating it. It's a really important reflected light. I'll come back to that later. And what that reflected light does, okay, reflected light coming back up, um, you know, there might be an object here and it's reflecting. What that does is it makes the core shadow appear, okay, and that's that dark, I always go on about the core shadow, it's that dark band that's going through the object, okay, and that is so important. For the for this 3d illusion that we want to capture okay so this core shadow going through the egg there now we've got our cast shadow of course we need to we need to place the object on a surface okay so let's put our cast shadow on and really two things about the cast shadow it's going to be sharper nearer the object okay so you can use a tip tip of your pencil even get a nice sharp line and it's gonna be blurry away from the object, like further away. So sharp here and blurry here. Okay, so let's fill that in. Move some shade. Okay, maybe we can blur this a little bit. So really important to think sharp and blurry. Sharp and soft edges. Cool. Um, so just want to show you that there, so you can see on the reference, just here, it's getting really blurry, and then it's getting sharp, nearer the egg. Um, and finally, our occlusion shadow. So I think I've mentioned this before, but you know, if you put your fingers together, there seems to be a line there, doesn't there? And it's not actually a line, it's just shadow, okay? Light can't get into that gap, and uh, so it's creating the illusion of a line. So actually that's happening here. We're getting this occlusion shadow where the object is uh, hitting the surface. Okay, so 
I hope you got a few notes and things. We're going to put this to the test now. Um, and I'm going to give you a chance to draw this egg. Two minute timer. Okay. If you've already had a go at drawing it and you've put the notes on, let's go again. Okay. Here we go. Two minute timer. Practice makes perfect. Right. So basic shape. I want to get that car shadow in on the table. Right. Now, outlining the difference between light and dark and getting that core shadow. Right, now I'm going to start to shade. So I'm not following the form at the moment. I might follow the surface of the table though. I like that idea of a strong line coming away from the object. Now I need a little bit of, I might, I might do some contour, contour uh, hatching here. Get some of that half tone in, following the surface. Just gonna put a little bit of tone in. Now, need to build up that core shadow. Make sure we've got that line through the middle of the object. Occlusion shadow, that dark part under the egg. Gonna darken the car shadow up a little bit. Also called a drop shadow. If you think it's dropping, it's casting its shadow. Okay. My, I've been a bit light with my shading. I think I'm gonna go in the last few seconds and really darken this whole area up. And then just as we finish, get my rubber put a bit of a highlight on there. Cool, there we go, that's our egg. I think I could definitely have been more intense with the, with the tones. <laughs> it's an egg timer, brilliant. <laughs> um, could have been a bit more intense with these tones. I might sharpen up this occlusion shadow here. But great, we've got these fundamental shape, um, uh, sorry, shadow tech, uh, shadows. We know them. We can identify them on a simple object. So brilliant. Um, I think that's a really good exercise, you know, before any, if you're gonna do uh, sort of life drawing, anything, just warm up, you know, get, get your arm moving and get used to identifying them shadows. So brilliant guys, well done. We're gonna move on to two poses. Got some great images, 15 minute and a 20 minute. Okay, so enough time to get a nice drawing and also get stuck into the, the rendering too. Okay, so here we go. Fifteen minutes. Good luck everyone. Yeah, the art club's gonna be online, definitely. It's gonna be exactly the same as this on YouTube, absolutely free. Okay, and I hear Max is gonna do us a new theme tune. So, stay tuned for that. Um, right, I've been thinking about eggs too much. Now I need to think, figure. Let's just start blocking in, shall we? And then I think, after five minutes, I'm going to start to shade. Okay. Thinking of a bit of a bean for the torso. We've got quite a lot of fabric. So my drawing will come up a little bit light um, today because I'm using graphite pencils. I hope you 
join drawing along. Okay. So wrapping around this surface. Trying to think of all the lessons we've sort of we've gone over over the past five weeks, uh, ten weeks. We covered a lot of ground. alignment I think to sort me out get my negative space right underneath this arm Don't, don't be frustrated, you know, it's the first image, first proper kind of figure study here, so let's, let's just use it as a warm up, shall we, and switch our observation brain on. Thanks for the thumbs up. Thanks for liking the video, Candy. You better be signed up for the art club. <laughs> cool. Right, so I'm trying to outline a few areas of tone. and trying to calm down a bit, trying to battle off the heat. It's great that some of you could join us for the first time this evening. Um, I hope you've been doing well during the strange lockdown period that we're in. Okay, I think I've got enough lines and things. Let's start putting on some tone, shall we? So, maybe a bit more of an indication of this wrapping round. Okay, let's just start putting some, putting some tone on. I'm hoping to kind of mass this drawing together and fix, fix the problems in, in the uh, tones. So a little bit like painting, coming at it with areas of tone and hoping for the best. Gonna keep that kind of directional shading. See where it takes me. Links in the description, Candy. We're going to start an art club in July and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun.
Varsha says, can I please speak Hindi? I wish I could. I really do. <laughs> I really do. Sorry about that. Okay, so I've kind of got like a first layer of shading. I'm going to keep going now, keep building it up. And I'm kind of squinting my eyes a little bit. Remember thinking of this as a tonal drawing. So just want to block in areas. I don't mind if I'm losing some detail. make sense of the folds, try and make sense of the fabric. I've been doing a lot of charcoal drawing recently. Um, coming back to graphite, a little bit of a a little bit of a shock but it's so good to just you know keep keep using all different mediums keep your brain guessing keep your you know keep thinking of the fundamentals um, you know we never stop learning we never stop learning start building up some more directional and more detailed lines. Okay, so I think I'm going to move up a grade, going to use a 6B and start putting on some uh, some details on things. Doesn't look like much at the moment. <laughs> I'm not I'm not promising anything. Kind of try and reinforce a few core shadows, if possible. Mm -hmm. 
sharpening up the silhouette a little bit. Got to keep an eye on that time. We're against the clock. I was a bit ambitious with the the time I've given you guys. But it's all good. We're warmed up. We know what we know what it takes now, don't we? So, navel. Another minute left. I will give you a bit more time on the next one, don't worry. I always say in the life drawing classes, you know, if you even if you're only happy with one bit, you know, choose a choose a uh, a focal point and have fun with it. You know, you don't have to paint a complete picture. There we go, a couple of seconds. There we go. Cool. So I started to build up some tone. I think I went, I panicked a bit and I went for the darker pencil to, to bring it together a little bit more. Um, I think really, you know, I was setting myself up for, for like a half hour, 45 minute drawing with my process. So the next one, I'm going to try and come at it with a bit more speed and perhaps be a little bit more direct straight away with the hatching. Um, can't wait to see how you guys got on. Uh, Poppy did way too much shadow. <laughs> Good. Good. Um, right, I'm going to get grab a new piece of paper. And I've got this, this next bit pose. So, 20 minutes now. Um, Let's get into it. We've got a lot going on here. We've got the face. We've got uh, the body's a little bit simpler, less sort of fabric and things. I would say we've got to be a little bit careful of this arm um, because you know it, it's it's resting and, we, and it's getting obscured by the chair. So if you're going to draw the arm, I would say make it really quite clear that there is a chair there and there's something there. Um, uh, yeah, and. Good luck everyone, 20 minutes. I'll see you on the other side. Right. I'm gonna go in a bit more direct, I think. Okay. 
always challenging you here. I think uh, I saw these great poses and I was like, we must do them. Uh, but it, they look quite, um, they look quite daunting, don't they? Because they've got so much uh, dark in them. that envelope, that mitten for the hand and then we can put some structure into it a bit later on perhaps. alignments actually I need that ear to be in line with the finger I'm gonna bring the hand out a little bit more ear to the eye brow lines just above that so really paying attention to the things that we were doing in the accuracy session a few weeks ago starting with very sh straight lines it's a bit of, you know uh, getting the layout getting getting the proportions A little bit of measuring. Got a bit of a layout, got a bit of a rough pencil lines in there. Um, I think I'm going to rub it out a little bit and have you know nice a nice um, kind of blueprint underneath my drawing.
making sure to rub out the lines that are wrong. Okay. And yeah, let's go in again. Yeah, so Poppy, the first half was pencil, and then when we come back after the break, charcoals. But by all means, you know, use whatever you you want to use, uh, you're familiar with using. It's just a great chance for us to get drawing together. So I think I'm gonna go in and reinforce these shadow shapes and then just start to block in all the darks. I'm going to include the background on this one and just start to group my uh, my tones together. to be pretty we just need to block in the darks Just be back one second. Hey, right back. Cool. Ah, this is coming together. Okay, so aim for them darks. I think I want to make it bleed out into the page uh, with these kind of expressive hatching marks.
I forgot to go over um, the uh, beginner, the great mistakes with you. Um, so I'll do that now as we're drawing. So essentially, one of the biggest ones is is if you're drawing a, a, a sphere, light direction, one of the biggest ones is people think, okay, it goes light to dark and they're having their light, their dark side here and they're gradually getting lighter. Okay, so just putting a gradient on and going from dark to light. People generally think that that's a sphere and that's, that's a 3D, but don't forget we need that we need that core shadow. That's the darkest part there. Okay, quite half tones. That's the darkest part. And then it's gonna get lighter because we have reflected light. There we go. So can you see how that's already lo looking more, it's coming off the page more than this one this is looking flat or almost like a hole that we're looking into. So that's the first kind of bit. And also another one, be careful of your uh, reflected light. Okay, so all the light reflecting back into this area. It's very easy to make too much of that. So you might notice in this image, there's not actually much reflected light. Um, I think it's quite heavily edited image but this reflected light will always be darker than generally you know than with one light source will always be darker with than the, any of this area any of these half tones any of these highlights okay so we can the mistake would be I guess to make this too light like that you see and then what you need to do is push it back and make sure not we make not making too much of that highlight that reflected light, sorry. that there's a chair there. I think I really want to loosen up and really make, really have some fun with the hatching instead of thinking, you know, in that academic kind of slow way of drawing. I want to really speed this up add some contrast and enjoy it.
putting on some lighter lighter hatching lines here so I've swapped to a 2B just to give myself a little bit more room uh, to put to apply pressure but without making the area too dark so just swap to the 2B Another two minutes. So I'm just going round, trying to step back a little bit and think what's the major problems, anything I can fix right at the last minute. Time's flying by tonight, isn't it? wait to see your drawings. Make sure you're sending them in to jakebustle.art at gmail.com and we'll make sure we see them in the second half. Brilliant. Okay, that's time. So, cannot wait to see your drawings. Um, yeah, I think I'm a bit happier with this one as kind of like a tonal study. You know, patches of these overlapping hatching. Um, I quite like the, um, you know, the way I've, I've followed that direction. Um, but, you know, made variations on it. Um, I think face is a little bit wonky you know could have been a bit more uh, paid a bit more attention to that but you know yeah I, I, and uh, great first half everyone we're gonna take a five minute break and when we get back we're gonna uh, I've got a little surprise um, but we're gonna also look at the charcoal materials uh, and the numbers method for charcoal which is really good really simple broad, uh, great approach uh, for charcoal I absolutely love it and um, share that with you we're going to do a charcoal warm-up and get into a few more poses so five minutes now make a cup of tea get a cold drink get some charcoal up to you um, see you in a moment
Hey everyone, we're back. I've got an ice pack to try and cool me down. Um, hope you're nice and cool, staying hydrated. Whew. Um, right. Yeah. What did I have to? What did I have to say? Yeah. Right. Make sure you're liking the video. We got low low amount of likes this week. Max isn't happy. Is 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 gonna is gonna be after you. So click like. It really helps us out. Uh, and thank you. I just wanted to um, share with you that actually it's my brother's 30th birthday uh, next week. Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, start again. My brother's 30th birthday uh, tomorrow and I love him so much and he's the best brother ever. Uh, he's been helping out so much with this stream. So I'd love it if you could give him a happy birthday uh, in the chat and just wish him with me um, to have a great day. Um, anyone else had a lockdown? Anyone else had a, a COVID birthday? Uh, so I'm sharing a few little pics of Max. Uh, but yeah, bro, thank you so much. Thank you for all the help. Thank you for being the best brother ever. Uh, and uh, yeah, couldn't do this without you. I wouldn't be uh, yeah, I, I just can't imagine it without you. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Loads of happy birthdays coming in. Nick's, Nick's coming in with a woo. <laughs> Laura. Brilliant. Laura says, welcome to the club, Max. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, guys. It's been so much fun this last 10 weeks with everyone. So much fun. Um... Right, where were we? With ch charcoals now, isn't it? Charcoals. Brilliant. So, let's get some more paper. And uh, say goodbye to Max. <laughs> he's, he's on his Game Boy. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, he's coming in. Cheers, bro. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. Say hi. Say hi. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. <laughs> Okay, um, there we go. Charcoal, charcoal materials. <laughs> right. Da, 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 da. Right. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Back from birthday mode into art mode. Right, brilliant. Here are my resources laid out on a dresser. Vine charcoal. So this is what this is what I would choose to to create a, a charcoal image. Uh, it's what I'm going to be using today. 
Some people like to use, you know, all different types of uh, combinations of things, compressed charcoal, all different types. So there's no right or wrong, but this is what I'm suggesting, okay? So I've got some vine charcoal, just cheap vine charcoal, kitchen paper for a little bit of smudging, charcoal pencils. And when I'm using uh, vine charcoal, I use, generally, I use the HB, General's HB char uh, charcoal pencil, uh, just for, for kind of like, uh, for a little bit of blending between tones, a little bit of texture really really good um, and I thank Sean Otham for that tip um, I've got chalk pencil you could use chalk but I haven't got any with me but the chalk pencil is pretty good for just picking out you know I might not use it today because I've got white white paper but if you were if you had like a bit of a tone paper it'd be brilliant for just picking out a little bit of a highlight blending stumps these are strange things um, really you know you don't need them you can use the paper you can use your fingers but sometimes when you want a little bit more of like a mechanical blend or you know just they can come in handy um, and what you can clean them with the with the uh, with a putty rubber and or you can load them with charcoal and, and smudge with them as well so another interesting thing and of course the putty rubber or the kneadable eraser as you call it in the States but um, yeah, these are amazing and they're brilliant for charcoal because they just lift out any any of that charcoal dust from the paper because we're essentially playing with dust. We've got a load of uh, black dust on the paper and we're pushing it around. We're painting with it. So this is such a valuable tool. So if you're joining with charcoal, um, brilliant. And I'm going to go through a numbers method now. So I want you to join in with me grab a stick of charcoal and here we go so we're gonna make five boxes and I'll share with you the numbers method okay so five boxes okay I'm gonna fill these with time so we've got one two three four five okay and we're gonna go again from light to dark okay so number one you know that is almost the white of the page okay so we can just very very lightly you know almost just just brushing the page um, or even just the white of the page for one okay and then two you can if you can be careful with the pressure that you're putting on the paper just put kind of the next tone up just a little bit more a little bit more there uh, you can also use a longer stick of charcoal and kind of graze along the surface for a light tone as well okay um, we've got number three so a nice in between I want to blend a little bit smudge it a little bit nice middle tone four so almost black but we've got a bit of white we've got a bit of something showing through and then as dark as you can go for number five there we go okay so one to five hopefully you've got that on your paper too okay and now the numbers method Basically, we're gonna use four, then we're gonna go two, then three. Oh, wait, no, I'm, I'm getting it wrong. Yeah, four, two, three, five, and one. Okay, so four first, then two, then three, then five and one. Okay, so I'll just demo it really quickly, and then we'll, we'll, we'll try together try and remember that order and that's the, the order of the tones that we're going to put on so if I've got a ball here I'm going to put on four so it's really quite dark not completely dark but really quite dark so everything past that terminator I'm blocking in even the the cast shadow blocking it all in then two 
So I might come in with a stick of charcoal. So I've got one here. And put in them half tones. Okay. Then three. So that, why is it four, two, and three? Three because now we can now we can blend. Okay, we can perhaps load our finger with a bit of charcoal and start to blend between these areas. Okay, and we're we're creating the third tone uh, by blending. Okay, there we go. You see, so that third tone that's been created just by blending the four and the two together. Uh, there we go. Then five and one. So this is your highlights and your darkest darks. So we can go on now and we can put an inclusion shadow, which would be our darkest dark. Maybe darken up that core shadow just a little bit more. Make sure we're getting a, a blend. Okay, and it looks like I've got a bit too much reflected light there, so I'll bring it back a little bit. There we go. Okay, I'm making sure we've got a, a sharp, sharp uh, cast shadow. And then it's going blurry when it gets further away from us. And last thing, we can put on our number one. So we can bring back the white of the paper. My shadow is a bit of a funny shape. But we can bring back the white of the paper and we can put on a highlight here, okay? I've got that. Boom, okay, that highlight. Okay, so we save them darks and we save them, um, them highlights right until the end. I think it's a really lovely way to work with charcoal. Really, you know, soft, uh, really fast, really fun. So, I'm gonna give you give you a chance to, to warm up. Uh, let's have another go at doing following that method. Got a picture of an orange. <laughs> okay, give you two minutes and let's follow that method again. So it was it was four, two, three. Five and one. There we go. Let's have a go at doing this orange together. Quite similar. We can put on the shape first and then start to make sense of our values. So our value is four. Using the side of the charcoal. Okay, two, so lightly with the charcoal. Three, I'm gonna have this finger loaded with charcoal and I'm gonna start to make that in between tone. Bring out a bit of reflected light. Take away too much, not a problem. Just put put it back on. Now, five and one. So really gonna go on dark with this cast shadow. And really put more of that little suggestion of orange and more of that core shadow. Okay, and last bit, it's any highlights. And I'm just gonna correct my drawing a little bit there. There we go, and make the 
make the shadow blurry in the distance. Okay, how did you get on with the orange? Hope you got on well. Um, don't be afraid to send in your oranges as well. <laughs> I'd love to see them. Um, I'm just going to, I just need to rip some more paper out of my pad. And I'll be with you in a second. Okay. Now just a note as well, paper, when it comes to charcoal, paper is very, very important. I'm using Strathmore 400. Um, I put a link in the description to the paper. Uh, Strathmore 300 works really well as well. Uh, that's what I used in the in the portrait charcoal portrait video that I've done recently. Um, you know, I, I think either or really. Uh, they're very they're quite smooth, but they've got enough just enough tooth to show a bit of texture with the charcoal. And that's really what we want. We want that mixture of texture and smoothness, um, you know, to create like an interesting, uh, yeah, use of use of the medium. So here we go. Our pose three. This is our thumbnail pose. So actually, I'm going to give you ten minutes for this one, and then we're going to finish on a twenty-five minute, bit longer, bit more complicated pose. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoy. Um, and let's follow that that method. So four, two, three, five, and one. Here we go. So I'm gonna, I think, establish some shapes. from the brow to the ear. It's quite a funny angle this. It's like leaning towards us. So I'm just blocking in these shapes. Shape, then value, then think about edges and think about blending, etc. And we can go further on with the portrait. Large shapes first, gotta keep telling yourself, stick to the large shapes. We've got some good hair here we can put we can use our ribbon hair technique that we did in week two okay so more or less blocked out the shapes just going to push it back Think come in with some with some time. Katie, I'm so glad you could join in live. Um, that's fantastic. So four first, wasn't it? Four. I'm just, I'm not even considering the features yet. I'm just blocking in. <laughs> 
<laughs> Loads of happy birthdays. Thanks, guys. Thanks. <laughs> So I put in my fours, now my twos. So actually this part of the back is in shade. I think I'm gonna cover the whole area in shade just so that I can lift out the ones later on. Okay, now I'm going to blend a bit and start to make sense of these values. So I'm changing finger. If I want somewhere to be a little bit lighter, I use the light. I can use a cleaner finger and I've got the, the darker finger for my loaded charcoal. I think I took off too much here on the head. It's okay. the charcoal I'm coming back more detailed smudging you can bring in these smaller blending stumps okay okay I'm gonna start to refine now start to add a bit of detail Maybe I can draw with the rubber instead. There we go.
think I'm going to come in with my charcoal pencil. And just make a bit more sense of the face before we finish. There we go guys, how did you get on with that 10 minutes? Just refining a little bit with this charcoal pencil, adding a few little bits. Cheating really aren't I? <laughs> call it a day but you see how that charcoal pencil can come in and really rescue a drawing once you've done the hard work once you once you put the tones down you can come in and, and start to pick areas and smooth areas over cool one more drawing I hope you're gonna like this reference another difficult one I'm afraid but we love a challenge here we go. Really cool. Love this pose. Love the light on the face. Um, we've got 25 minutes. Um, yeah. Really hope you enjoy. Are those bird tweets real, John says. Yeah, they're absolutely real. Royalty free birds outside my window. They're brilliant little soundtrack. I'll have to record them for when I move so that we can have them in the next in the next uh, video. Oh, sorry, wrong with our timer. There we go. 25 minutes, here we go. So I'm gonna attempt to start in a similar vein. really like the face. I think I'm going to start there and see where I get. So she's the head's tilted up a bit so her chin is very high up but almost flat. We can, almost, we can just about see underneath her chin. are high up the face as well and her nose so I'm just putting some indications on I'm hoping the uh, the new studio won't be so hot because I'm so hot every every week. <laughs> um, we'll have to get some LED lights and hopefully being downstairs will be a bit cooler. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Really love that pose. So I'm outlining shapes, I'm outlining shadows, trying to get these shoulders right.
at that collarbone, really strong. Fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna push it back. And start with some darks. So actually that whole side of the face. It looks messy at the moment, but I'm hoping to block in these darks and make sense of it. Shoulder up, I mean. this um, blending stump and start to make some of them level three tones and lighten up some areas. Maybe too much 
reflected light there. And then great mistakes. I'm really trying to simplify the features. Detail can make things weaker, you know, um, especially in the dark shadows, you know, we're putting too much detail within the shadows. Um, so I might just make some of that uh, not described. Now I'm starting to think of my darkest darks, my lightest lights, um, and I'm starting to think of edges as well. So I might bring in the HB. Do a bit of correcting, a bit of blending. Try and maybe get a bit more motion or something in, in here.
that shadow on the neck needs to come over. Boom. 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 Let's bring in some highlights on this side of the face. Don't forget to send your work in. Um, I'll give you a little bit of time after this drawing to send this one in too. I can't wait to see what you're all up to. And if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best. Really just enjoying now adding a bit of interest and adding a bit of something here and there. That collarbone, wow. It wasn't where I put it earlier, was it? <laughs> it's the thing about charcoal, we can just move it around, we can really play with it like no other medium really. Um, Bring some highlights back with the putty roller. So every one of these little forms is going to have its core shadow, you know, its highlight, everything. So you know, thinking of every little area as a sphere or as an egg or, or any kind of simple shape, and just remembering oh, 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 then fundamental kind of shadows. Okay, here we go, putting in some correcting highlights. Laura says, Charcoal and softer B-grade pencils have definitely loosened up my drawing this week. Brilliant, brilliant. I'm really happy to hear that. Loosen up, that's that's amazing. Anything that can get you to loosen up and have a bit more oomph, a bit more confidence. I'm so happy that um, that's helped this week. Wonderful. You can hatch with the, the rubber as well to create texture. I'm on 
sure how to suggest this fabric. I'm gonna bring in a few reflected light into that. A few bits of reflected light. Nice to put a hand in it, but <laughs> do I attempt to? <laughs> um, what have we got to lose, eh? There's nothing. Maybe I'll bring out the charcoal pencil and do a bit of drawing. There's the arc of the fingers wrapping around. Just kind of aiming for the shadow sides of the fingers and hoping for the best. Torso there. Really cool. couple of minutes left
Yeah. Very difficult here. Can't wait to see how you guys tackled these hands. Um, but lots of fun. Really enjoyed this pose. Last few marks. great brilliant guys really really hope you enjoyed this week the last week of lockdown life drawing um well done well done i love that second half with the charcoal i hope you did too um here we go kind of wasn't sure what was going on here <laughs> but uh really 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 loved just that time just to sit listen to some bird song <laughs> and uh and do some drawing let me know how you thought what you thought about the the uh the numbers method you know starting with four and everything i think it's a really really cool thing um send in your work jake bustle dot art at gmail.com max is working away behind the scenes uh, putting them together so that we can have a look uh, in, in the viewer gallery. I just want to thank our Patreon supporters. Guys, thank you so much. It, your support is amazing. Um, yeah, you're going to be getting behind the scenes content, high quality reference photos, um, worksheets. And um, if, you've, if you're on the, the tier that offers um, personal tutoring, I'll see you in a in a personal tutoring class very soon but thank you so much for your support every one of you and you know even if you're, you're not a patron supporter just the subscribers and and everything you know we've been blown away uh, it's been amazing um we got to 500 subscribers this week and um yeah i said to max when we start this if we can inspire one person to draw i'll be happy you know and the, the stories and everything have just made it all so worth it. So, uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, thanks for being part of this journey. Um, on to the next chapter. So we'll be back 6th of July. Uh, sign up on the mailing list down in the description. Uh, and it's going to be on this channel. Same sort of thing. Broader subjects. Um, yeah, be ready. Be ready. I'm gonna I'm gonna be emailing you, telling you materials and everything to get prepared. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So new studio, new new uh, new uh, everything, and uh, yeah, hope you'll join me. Laura says smashed it. Have loved every session. Thanks, Jake and Max. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ashley. So excited for Art Club. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Poppy. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Naomi. Thanks, guys. Okay, where's Max? How's he doing with them? With them viewer galleries. How you doing, bro? Yeah, quite good. Yeah, we ready to look at some? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. My favourite part. Okay, I'm just gonna load it up. Here we go. Ah, oh, look at this. Mm. Brilliant. Oh, Karen, well done. That was a difficult pose, wasn't it? With all them, that drapery and everything. Oh, that's wonderful. I love that, that you know, expressive use of, of, of hatching. Really nice. Um, really nice to be put together, Karen. Um, yeah. I, I, I love that I, you know it's sort of it's almost dancing isn't it it's like really got got so much character and, and a bit of movement I like that paper as well quite a, quite a coarse paper so you're getting a lot of white a lot of that texture come through and that that's really adding something to it lovely 
Oh, James. Really nice. Oh, look at that. So you've got something that I was really, I, I really wanted to, to fix about mine. You've got a really clear um, silhouette on the face. You've got a lovely profile uh, there on, on, the, on the lips and the nose and the chin and everything. And that's really well done, especially with such a, uh, a, a rough and, and, and difficult medium like uh, a, a charcoal. Absolutely love it, Jane. Well done. This paper needs more teeth from Nick. Mm. I'd love to know what paper you're using, Nick. Uh, you know, look, looks like a really good uh, going in with the strong to tones there and, and, you know, really good start. Perhaps, perhaps a bit more time uh, like my one, you know, I wanted to refine just a little bit more, didn't I? Um, but yeah, hopefully you can find some paper that you feel a bit more comfortable with. Um, but Nick, I really like it. Um, yeah, love that 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 pose with the, with the shoulder blade. It was it was beautiful, wasn't it? Well done, Nick. Um, I've loved your drawings every week. Um, I recognise all your names and everything, and I just absolutely love seeing the progression. Uh, I was talking to talking to Naomi the other day, and we were both agreeing how much we think everyone's come on. Uh, it's yeah, incredible. Ian, oh, brilliant. Love this, a little bit of contours, contour hatching there on the, on, the, on the hair, that ribbon effect. I love that highlight coming through there. This is really nice. Um, yeah, really like that use of blending and that, that third tone. You know, that third and second tone, really, really key. You know, it's really important that we get all five tones and we get them with like a, a quite a fair amount as well. And I feel that you've done that. You've really, it's got, a, it's really balanced uh, in, in the values. So Ian, I love it. Sarah, thank you too. Thanks for joining. It's been brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Kerry. Great to have you join us this week. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is good. Ah, so much character. No name on this one, but absolutely beautiful. I love that texture in the background. I love the confidence of the, um, you know, the, the, the drapery and everything there, you know, and, and aiming for them shadow shapes on the, on the fingers and everything. And the, and the uh, 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 yeah, really, really cool love that um love that a hairline you know look at the little little curls of hair coming out each side i love that really it was really playful wasn't it on the reference you've really done well to capture that and the collarbones and everything oh wow okay really nice uh, again with the shoulder bones um what they called <laughs> shoulder blades <laughs> and uh look at that texture that's almost like just, I don't know, that's just a beautiful texture there with the charcoal. I don't know what charcoal you're using, but it's like, it's getting scratchy in places. It's getting, it's getting like massy and it's, it's really, you know, picking up a nice bit of tooth from the paper. So it's a nice study. Well done. Thanks for sending it in. Ah, another great one by Karen. Really cool. I love bringing the color in a little bit of that chalk on the, on the, on the tone paper. Very nicely observed, Karen. Yeah, I really like that paper, that tooth coming through. It's nice and in proportion. Really nice. Who's this? Is this is this Lynn? Am I getting it right? Is that Lynn? Yeah, that oh I love these ones. This this um this was the final pose, wasn't it? And you've really you've really done so much with the time and and you know them hands oh you've done you've you've done so much better than me <laughs> in terms of the hands and actually getting the whole figure on i love this line wrapping around the waist and the navel there and all this shadow all this texture that you've got going on lovely core shadow lovely really nice hair flicks as well and yeah i love the little bits of um 
a little bits of detail on the on the what was it? Is it like a? It was like a frock or something. What was it? I I don't know women's clothes. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. <laughs> Help me out. <laughs> <laughs> TH oh wow okay so this is looks like more of that charcoal or maybe this is someone else but that is really cool that's so strong that is so strong it looks almost like brushed you know um, and we're getting a bit of blue coming through you know I've noticed that different charcoals have different colors you know some are brown some are blue some are green and, and yellow it's really interesting, you know, you get a new pack and it's a totally different color. So you've got to be careful mixing them. But this is beautiful. Um, love your use of rubber and everything. Oh, look at this, bits of ink. Is this Ronan? Is that Ronan, is that right? Wow, that is really cool. Really cool, so much so much shadow and, and, and character and depth love the way you've simplified the hand the knuckles there just wrapped around and you've got that block of the wrist do you remember we're looking at that few little lines like um, I forget what they're called but the, the kind of the drumstick by, um, muscles on the forearm you've just put a few little lines there to wrap around and, and you know just yeah really really nicely observed and really uh, some good, I think some good design decisions made as well. Like I even like the, uh, the, the splodges, you know, dotting about the picture. Wonderful. Naomi, oh, these are cool. Wonderful, so great study there in the top right with the core shadow and everything. Really love that. And yeah, you've really pushed that into the figures. Look at that. Look at that waist on the left hand side you've got that lovely darker part uh, there and and really really nice i'm i'm feeling that they are um that there's uh, different planes on these surfaces you know i can feel the depth um and that's exactly what we want again on that hand on the head on the one to the bottom right very clearly showing the wrist and everything and, and you clearly understood that and that's great, you know, to, to see that structure coming into the drawings um, and, and informing you, you know, to make stronger drawing. Wonderful. Ah, oh, lovely. Okay, so totally uh, uh, opposite approach, putting on the, on the whites. This is wonderful. I've got a feeling that this, that this is Kerry's, but I'm not going to say. <laughs> it could be anyone's. But uh, this is absolutely brilliant. I love, I love, love this. Wonderful. Let me know who it is. It's beautiful. How good are them planes of light on the fingers there? That is just wonderful. And you've brought the attention up. You know, um, the, the shadow shapes that you've left with the paper are absolutely absolutely wonderful um, yeah really wonderful and uh, thanks so much for joining in and sending the work it's a pleasure to see everyone's I knew it was yours <laughs> I knew it was yours yeah no wonderful Rod V oh look at this lovely mixture of hatching so you've got the the contour hatching and, and also some some kind of directional and cross hatching and I can see you've used different weights of pencils and, and you've really explored and, and and kind of experimented with that and that's a wonderful little study isn't it that is that is wonderful that was the striking part of the pose and you've really really captured it uh, it's really great and, you know, I'm getting a bit emotional I'm not gonna be able to see these wonderful drawings for the next week but guys, I hope you carry on drawing, keep drawing, and uh, and we will be back. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Richard, oh, look at this. That's brilliant. Is this compressed charcoal? Is this, there's, a, there's some interesting texture there, isn't there? There's some, something going on, and I, I love it. 
and pulling that pulling the edge of the charcoal and into that that getting that crisp line as a, uh, you know mixing with the with the with the other shapes absolutely wonderful yeah definitely uh, poppy just said less is more on this charcoal you know fantastic and and look that that top right we haven't got almost any line there at all for the arm which is just bleeding out into the page i love that use of use of um suggestion really really cool and i can feel that it, the fabric almost looks like feels like silk you know you can feel feel it just by looking at it wonderful ah oh, great tonal study love this really really strong grouping together the backgrounds of the shadow under the arm and and everything there and the and your your shadow shape of the lips under the lip yeah wonderful really really nice um i like you're you're changing up your hatching uh your your hatching direction a little bit and you're and you're sort of having fun with it i really like that and it looks as though maybe we've run out of time a little bit but it looks as though your hand has got some nice structure there too so that was that looks like it's really coming together um really really good really really good hey we've got an orange <laughs> brilliant sandy fantastic orange fantastic orange we've even got a little bit of that reflected light there and the occlusion shadow really nice really nice I had that I actually ate that orange earlier on today it tasted just as good as it looks you've done you've done it just justice uh, Sandy so thank you <laughs> oh these are cool I love the sketchbook opened out bump 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 they're sort of they're staring at each other aren't they hey <laughs> brilliant really strong hatching beautiful love the love the, the marks um yeah that one on the left is really really uh really really jumping out at me and you've been accurate enough with the facial features for it to really speak to the to the viewer you know i wouldn't add anything else i think that's a beautiful study um that is yeah really really phenomenal and and I love the shadow underneath the chin, you know, there's, and you've left areas to be lighter and uh, yeah, really, really nice. I, I like your decision to leave less of the hand um, and just put that shadow of the, sh of the shoulder. I really like that. And starting to use the charcoal on the right, you've used the same kind of delicacy. Um, is that the right word? Uh, but yeah, wonderful. Um, that looks like almost a charcoal pencil or something and it's you know the way you've blended the in-between tones um and put some shadow there on the face just yeah wonderful it's so it's so delicate it, it describes exactly the pose these are wonderful images thank you so much for sending them in there we go viewer gallery end boom 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 whoa amazing images don't you think beautiful yeah really love them two images there uh, together at the end uh, that's a lovely sketchbook page um, guys thank you so much and uh, yeah hope to see you in July um, keep drawing you know uh, keep keep sending me your work I love to see it and um, yeah thank just thank you it's been great and hopefully um yeah I'm, I'm looking at my notes is there anything i've missed um bump there we go that's it like and subscribe there we go almost forgot thank you that really helps us out if you do that and and supports the channel uh, and we hope to keep bringing you uh the, some content um and just thank you for for letting us uh, supporting us and letting us be able to to do this it's absolute dream come true um, so hope we've ignited your passion keep drawing we'll see you in July and uh, yeah thanks guys thanks rich thanks <laughs> cool all right let's hear the, the theme song for one last time oh.
<laughs> See you soon, guys. Bye. <laughs> See you, everyone. See you in July. <laughs>